Hello, I'm Juan Fukano. I've scored many goals for my country. He is a player that everybody wants to see in the pitch. He plays with his head more than his legs. No mistake. Order restored. You see yourself being fit and then uh, somebody came up to you and then said that you're not really okay. You have some problem. People know me as Kano the footballer. Of course, we love them to know you are somebody who cares and uh, yeah, who have come all out to help others and save lives. It's a noble cause. There is hope. We are here to help people, to save lives. Something that people will still remember and say we are part of this foundation. On any given day, the city of Oweri is buzzing with activity. Set in the heart of Igbo land, this town has often been referred to as the entertainment capital of Nigeria. Linked to the rest of the country with a good road and rail infrastructure, Oweri is known for its agricultural produce of yams, cassava and palms. But today, this bustling town with an estimated population of about 400,000 inhabitants has its place on the global map. Hello, I'm Juan Fukano. I've scored many goals for my country. It is here that the renowned Nigerian footballer, Kanu Nwanko, comes from. Yes, we can do it. Kanu Nwanko is a Nigerian and uh, is a footballer. I will not forget Atlanta 96, where I saw him display. He's a very nice player. Whenever Nigeria is in difficulty and he's being substituted, he always he make an impact that will always give Nigeria a victory. He's a good player and I love him. He give a, 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 a lot of goals and a lot of performance. One was uh, an uh, Igbo name and it means a child born on Nkwa's day. Because we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we have it like Nkwa Ori Afo, AK. So we name it like that in Igbo. So one of those days is when I was born, and that's why they called me Nkwa Nkwa. So the son of that day. I started with um, a team called Federal Minister of Works. It's a local team in the state. They needed a tall man. So I was like playing for them, but at the same time I was schooling as well. So I used to make my money from there and try to buy my books. <laughs> Did you know that you get to buy home? <laughs> And the school school. I have what I have. <laughs> Where back when it eight thousand big one, they bought foam, foam, carpet, carpet and then rock, no, rock, no, rock no, carpet, rock carpet, video, and video yes. and TV, a bag of beans, <laughs> a quantity <laughs> of a planted. All right. I have known Kano for a long time, from 1982. You know, when I was still playing football. Fine young man who very uh, humble. Uh, very cool-headed, uh, even in his team, and so that was why he was able to make the mark in football. So tell me, tell me the secret. You played with him. Yes. You grew up with him. Yeah. You are still with him. <laughs> so yeah. The Actually, they say two hearts that be like one. 
two that works together. And uh, when you find a friend, you find a friend. And when you're at home, you are in peace. So you find peace, you know, but at the same time, the delicacy, you know, mother's food. Hey, those, those, uh, you understand, man. Those, uh, <laughs> and also to see their faces. Born here, played here, school here, played here, you know, all his life started here. That's something he left here. He wants to tap. What is that? Good friends. After the Federal Minister of Works, I went to a bigger club, which is in the Premier League, called Iguayamu National. I played for them for one year uh, before I. I left Europe and then um, signed with a club called Ajax. I played like um, three years with them, then went to Inter Milan. And I stayed in Inter Milan two years. I went to Arsenal. I stayed in Arsenal for one half year and I went to West Broom. I stayed two years in West Broom and then I went to uh, Portsmouth. And he has to run into him, that looked painful. Ekaro is a unique, he's a unique player. Uh, he stands out among the best in Africa. There is this magical touch that he turns the table, even when the tide is against a team he's playing. Whenever he comes in, he turns the tide and that's what he's known for. During the Atlanta 96 Olympics, when Nigeria was playing against Brazil, Brazil they were leading Nigeria. When um, Victor Ibeba scored a goal, reduced the tally, but just at the dot of the full time, Cameron scored the equalizer. He's a player that everybody wants to see in the pitch. Uh, a good midfielder, ball distributor, he has vision. He plays with his head more than his legs. When an athlete is at the top of his game, he feels immortal. Olympic success, burning up the premiership, being a national hero, Kanu was on top of the world. Some athletes turned to other challenges. Michael Jordan tried baseball. Sugar Ray Leonard sold cars for a while. Others are struck down by injuries. Knee problems are the most common. Drugs and alcohol can claim some careers. And athletes can be shot down by their egos, feuding with coaches, teammates, management, family, and even fans. But Kanu was a model citizen. What could possibly stand in his way? His health was threatened by the most elemental part of his being. A man with such strong compassion, it hit him in his most vital organ. Kanu found out he had trouble with his heart. I was at the peak of my career and um, everything was going fine and we were happy. You know, people were talking about you. So after the Olympics in uh, America, then I signed a new club, Inter Milan, with after the medical test, they find out that I have an uh, autic valve problem. Um, but it was like a surprise because you see yourself being fit and being okay. And then uh, somebody came up to you and then said that you're not really okay. You have some problem. So for me, it was like a shock. Uh, I didn't believe it at first. I have to go to other doctors to verify, to make sure that it's really what happened. But finally, yeah, the advice was like, you have to um, do the operation now that you're young, and then you can uh, carry out with your profession. And uh, which I accepted and I prayed to God. And uh, yeah, my family was with me and they were praying as well. And the whole country and the fans were like praying for me. People thought that was going to be the end of his career, but rather that was 
the beginning of what was to be the kind of phenomenon. And uh, he summed up the courage, he went under the knife at Cleveland Hospital in Ohio, United States of America. He came back, recovered, and um, Arsenal Football Club signed him. And uh, he played for Arsenal, scoring so many important goals, many people did not expect. And came back to win the African Footballer of the Year the second time. But you know, after coming out, he said, one way of being grateful to the Almighty God, one way of showing, giving back to the society that prayed for him, that stood behind him, uh, was to put up the foundation. It was his own idea. Since we started the foundation in 2000, a lot of people who had been suffering from heart-related problems began to come into the foundation. The doctors, they have said that he needs a heart surgery. So first and foremost, you will, you need a passport. The rate at which children, people suffer from heart-related problems is growing by the day. All these children, they are on the waiting list. This one is from South-South, this from Southeast, patient from the Southeast, adults, children, look at all of them. They are waiting. Plenty, plenty. So what we, what we do is... Initially when we started, we didn't just want to begin to make noise out of it. Uh, we, we felt that our... what we did would be able to speak for us. And then um, we began to break people. As out of now, we have operated 435 open heart surgery since we started in 2000. But the number on the waiting list is close to five to 700 cases. Now, if we have that in a foundation, in a charity organization, what will it be like in other hospitals? It's Down syndrome and I noticed when he had bat, went for the ECG and the echo test. From there, they discovered he has an heart problem. Somebody directed me here that we should come to Kano Heart Foundation. They can say anything to render any assistance they can render at least to put things in order for me and to put this man in face there. When you see a kid who cannot laugh, you see them sad, it touches you. So I was like, I can help. I can uh, do something about that because after the operation, you can see smiles on their faces and their family and everybody. So I think that's the best moment and the best you can ever you know, pray for to see you saving a life and helping others. Hello, I'm Juan Kukano. I've scored many goals for my country. He's a player that everybody wants to see in the pitch. He plays with his head more than his legs. No mistake. Order restored. You see yourself being fit and then uh, somebody came up to you and then said that you're not really okay, you have some problem. People know me as Kano the footballer. Of course we love them to know you are somebody who cares and uh, yeah, who have come all out to help others and save lives. The government has taken notice of the high incidence of cardiovascular disease and around 1992 a center was selected for taking care of cardiovascular medicine and surgery. Where we are now is the center for the whole country and uh, the first open heart surgery was done 
in the UNTH, this hospital, 1974. We have always been confronted with anybody that will help us solve the problem of cardiovascular medicine in the entire Africa and more particularly in Nigeria. This is very severe hypertension with heart failure. And normally, the patient should be hospitalized. The best treatment, the first one is bed rest. And then we install the clinical, uh, the chemical treatment, anti-hypertensive. But now, it's a question of financing. We're better. So, can we work well? It's almost 10 years I got associated with the Caribbean Co Foundation. Because I don't have the money. If I be able to have uh, a knowledge of what it looks like, mm. then uh, I will see what we can do. Uh, I will communicate the management. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to give them an insight to the epidemiology of uh, heart disease in Nigeria. I uh, tell them our major problem of funding, the, uh, especially the surgery, and uh, also uh, try to help people who have cardiovascular disease uh, put them back to normal life. because of my three years old daughter. She was diagnosed of having a hole in her heart when she was three months. I still refuse to accept the fact that I'm carrying a child with a hole in her heart. She's a very cheerful baby, very cheerful. At times I used to look at her that she cannot do this thing, but I find her doing it. And maybe when she's playing, I'm looking at her, pitying her that to be honest with you, my mind will be telling me that, do you know you soon, I don't know, that this child, is she going to leave and all that. I just keep having funny feelings. I checked the internet, I got to know of Camel Heart Foundation. I just had to come if there's anything they can do for me. I can't just sleep and wake up. I see her beside me, she's just there. She doesn't know what's happening to her right now. And I don't know what the future holds for her, so I don't know. I don't just know. Confused, very confused. You say mom, mom refused what? I've been refusing it right from time. Maybe that's what she wrote. What did you refuse? She was like, I have to do it, I have to surgery, surgery, surgery. I just kept on refusing it. You want me to show you? Let go, don't go. Don't party. Yeah? You don't need to party. Huh? Move up, wait one week. One week. One week old baby. Show you, move See how this was? How this was? They have done their surgery. You see? So you don't panic. Is it? Is he not alive? How many years now? Up to about seven years. Is he not alive? So why are you panicking? It's okay. You don't need to panic. I looked at her. You know, psychologically, you know that she's depressed. Because the first thing you have to do is to restore that confidence and show her some. That's what I was trying to do. Show her some pictures of people who have passed through the surgery, people who have to survive. By seeing those people, she will, oh, okay, it's, I thought before that once they say heart, the person is gone. So my child can equally survive. You build that up. I met someone who was operated to when he was a child and he has spoken with me. He has given me hope that if he could pull through, my child can also pull through. And I saw the mark on his chest where he was operated. It was scary, you know, but that the person that is showing me the mark is alive. I'm, at least I, I'm strong. I'm living here strong, stronger than the way I came in here.
The corner is 20 years old. It's my last one. When Lekon was one year, just starting purging, sick, sick. When I take her to the hospital that time, they say she had a hole in the heart. I said, hole in the heart? From where? Just thank God. Because that time, there's no money to even eat. I'd be selling market, but I can't sell again because of this boy. When she go to school, they'll bring him back. Sometimes the mouth will be bleeding. Come on, blood. You're the hand blue. The tongue blue, the eye red. You can't do anything. When I was a little kid from my couldn't play with my friends. I'd rather go down to feed, like, okay, I want to join guy, he says, No, I can't play ball. I should go and meet the losers. I felt bad. Lekon was ten years old. He can't walk. He can't eat. I always back him. To so even go out, I will be chained. So one day. Somebody called me that she saw some uh, car no one call car no foundation television. He said I take that so go there, go and confirm. When I reached there, they asked me to fee form. I fee form. Not quite three months, they take my son to Israel. I didn't pay money. This is when I was I came back from Israel. My mom, my dad, Mr. Abia, my sisters. So some of my friends are down here too, but they are not in the picture. That day I was happy too. When Lekon come back, when we reach the airport, I don't know Lekon again. The day airport with all of them. When I saw her, I didn't tell my picture. I said, this is Lekon. So I said, no, be Lekon. Because she was bounced like this. Uh, if you still look at that thing, eh? oh my god, I saw the stomach, no parts, change. Only they say in second nose, because I don't, ah, it's Lekon. It's one August. I give, give you room for airport, and they say, ah, thank God. I can't believe my eye. I'm not differentiating the, the other players from him. They are good people too, but Khan is the best of all. He has the skills, the, 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 the physique of football star is tall. Many things encourage me to like, okay, I want to be like him. Sometimes you have letters that come from all over the world. They try to write letters to you and say, come and help my kid that have had problem and come and cure and come and Forgetting that you're not a doctor, you're just a footballer, but the message still comes in. The first three kids we had done in England, but it was very, very expensive, and we have to move to Israel <laughs> because of the, uh, yeah, the price and everything. And then from Israel, then we started going to India, and it was more cheaper in India because the money we used to do in England, you can use it for three other people, so we changed. When you discuss with your team, if you have to know if they have the same approach and the same mind. And uh, but when we sat down and uh, put our heads together, we have the same opinion, the same heart, and believe that we can do it. And uh, since then, till now, we haven't had any problem. You mentioned 435. We couldn't have achieved that if my uh, team was not really hardworking. But for us, um, it's like we haven't achieved anything because we have a, a big margin, a big number on the waiting list. And we believe we can do even more better than that if people can listen to us and open doors for us and then we can achieve more. We don't want to have anybody on the waiting list. And we are planning to even build a cardiac hospital. We are looking at about $35 million something like about five billion naira for the hospital. The major thing is the aspect of raising the funds. The big corporate bodies, individuals, you really need to push them, you need to persuade them, and uh, you need to go through a lot of um, blockades and all that to be able to convince them to, to be a part of what is happening. 
luckily enough, the government has been magnanimous enough to give the foundation a, a line in Abuja where the thing can be built. We've not been getting the kind of support we need. All we do is that we organize events, raise funds. Khan will invite his friends, play some matches. We'll be able to raise some funds to be able to, you know, uh, take care of this vision. When we started, you see, what was uppermost in our mind was the life of the individual. I've lost some few patients in India, in Israel, and uh, when I lose such patients, it's not, it's not a, it's a sad commentary. Uh, I remember a case vividly when, when I lost a, a, little, a little boy. We did everything possible to send that boy, and after the surgery, they called me from Israel and said, the boy was well, he has, I was with the father, and we were, you know, giving glory to God. But after about three, four hours, they called me to say the boy developed crisis, and the boy passed away. In 2003, we had a test room. We brought doctors from the United States of America, 20 doctors led by Professor Novik. Within a span of 10 days, they were able to operate 13 children. And in that 13 children, we lost two, but the other 11 are living today. It gave us hope that if we have the right infrastructure, if we have the right, we have the doctors in this country, but if, if we blend them with the, with, with the foreign exercise we now, there will be transfer of technology and we will be able to do more cases and more children will be saved in this country. I want to say happiness, smiles. Football is a talent God gave me and when I was a kid you know, I have this dream that you want to be the best. Because you like the world to remember you as a footballer and that I've been there, that I've done that and uh, achieved great heights. People know me as Kano the footballer, but also now the foundation is here. Of course, we love them to know you as somebody who cares and uh, yeah, who have come all out to help others and save lives. But if you ask me the trophy or the foundation, I will tell you the foundation because life is not to have only one life. <laughs>